evening. So, good evening. How are y'all this evening? Worship was good. It wasn't long enough, but hey, this is the first Wednesday of the month, so we've got to feed our face. And since that takes up more time than most anything else, we limit our praise and worship time-wise, but quality-wise, it was good. Amen? Listen, I'm going to talk to you about is it warfare or is it sanctification? I can tell that you're extremely excited about that subject tonight and can't wait to hear it. Amen. You know, um, I have had to ask myself that question. Lord, is, is this you sanctifying me, cleaning me up, or is this an attack of the enemy? Or is it just me being fleshy? It's been my experience in the past that when it comes to the enemy attacking me, uh, that probably happens. It's just at my age, I'm not bright enough to catch it. So I say, praise God, he's sanctifying me. Okay, well, that was the intro, and I can see y'all about ready to eat. Sanctification, definition, the action of making or declaring something holy, or the action or the process of being free from sin. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 says, We always give thanks to God for you, my brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as a first fruit to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit and through belief in truth. So the sanctifier, the one that does this work, I don't know what I got going on here, um, is the one that sanctifies. He is the one that prepares us to be set apart for a particular purpose. First Peter 1 Peter 1.2 says, Who has been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit to be obedient to Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Christ went through sanctification. You remember Christ was a man, right? Kind of nod, wave at me, anything at all. Oh, okay. So because Christ was a man, he had to go through the sanctification process. Now for him, that happened out in the desert when the enemy, when Satan was tempting him. And do you remember how he each time responded to those temptations? with scripture, with the word of God. Now you would think that him being Jesus, knowing the word of God, etc., that that was the end of the sanctification process for him. But it wasn't. No, he being human was not fully sanctified in the desert. Well, Elder Fred, you're going to have to Prove that one to me, okay? Garden of Gethsemane. His flesh said, Father, let this cup pass from me. That wasn't the spirit Jesus speaking. That was his flesh not wanting to go to the cross. See, it was still being sanctified. The spirit. What was accomplished in the desert was that the flesh was going to submit to the Holy Spirit. He didn't have that struggle. We don't, we don't see that in, in the Gospels where his flesh is really struggling with stuff. Sounds more like us than him. Romans 15, 16, For I'm a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. He gave me the priestly duty of proclaiming the Gospel so that the Gentiles may become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Spirit. What is the mechanics of the Holy Spirit sanctifying us? 
what does it look like? What stage? What's the picture there? Much of our sanctification occurs during spiritual warfare because it's during spiritual warfare that we have to make that decision, just like Christ had to make the same decision in the desert. He used the Word of God as his weapon. So is it here. Jesus did not want to go to the cross. Don't you know he had thoughts like, man, if you give me another year, Father, I could get these guys whipped up into shape. But that wasn't the deal that was struck. Colossians 3, 12 through 17, and I'm not going to belabor 17. It says, so as God's chosen people, that's you, who are holy and set apart and sanctified for his purpose, are you, are you catching that the sanctification thing has nothing to do with your salvation? You love Jesus, you're going to go to heaven. The sanctification side of it is when you begin to be drawn more and more to the Lord. And you're beginning to realize that maybe I need to lay this down. Or maybe I need to quit doing that. And how you accomplish that is by the word of God. The Holy Spirit takes the Word of God and sanctifies you. It's a process. He will sanctify me until I am gone. And that's when the sanctification ends. Because once you're in the presence of Christ Jesus, you're made perfect anyway. Amen? Say amen. Congregation, amen. Okay. Mm. You know, James 1... 13 through 15, this has always been a wonderful scripture for me. When tempted, no one should say, God's tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. That's a clue. Spiritual warfare, that's a clue, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Let's not say, well, I don't really know when I'm being attacked. Yeah, you do. Because, see, our flesh doesn't want to have anything to do with the Spirit of God. Our flesh has had its way since baby, right on up through whatever age you were cut loose. Well, it says, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone sanctification process we already know that if you're being tempted it's either your flesh or it's the enemy or a combination of the two but it's got nothing to do with God not too hard to figure out it says in 14 but each person's tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed how do we keep from being dragged away by our own evil desire. That's part of the sanctification process. That's when we say, Lord, I can't do this. I need you to come and do it. And or, if it is truly a work of the enemy coming against you, if you'll just share what the scripture says, he's going to flee from you anyway. James, it says, just resist him. And he'll flee from you. Okay, everybody stand up. There we go. Just kind of stretch out. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. This guy's wearing us out. All right. Okay, sit back down. All right. Here... Here's the thing about sanctification. Here's, here's the thing about spiritual warfare. If there's nothing else you hear tonight, hear this. Sometimes you may feel defeated. Sometimes that struggle with your flesh and or enemy is tough. It doesn't matter. 
whether you win that battle or not. Oh, we like to be victorious over the enemy, and for sure we like to be victorious over our flesh, but, you know, that, that doesn't have to happen. No. See, it, it doesn't really matter whether you have that victory right then. Here's the scripture. Romans 8, verse 28. And we know now that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Did you hear that? It doesn't make any difference. Oh, yes, we would all love to forego the spiritual warfare side. And, this, and, and the spiritual warfare side is norm, normally enticed by our flesh to come into agreement because the flesh wants to do something. And the Spirit of the Lord saying no, and the flesh wants to do something. The flesh is looking for somebody, listen, to be in agreement. That word's key in the kingdom of God now. Agreement. If you come into agreement with a, a whispering voice over here that's being critical of somebody, you've just given them power. If you hear the Spirit speaking in, in like manner, and you agree with that just as Christ did in the desert, Satan came to him and said, hey, of course, this is the most stupid statement I've ever heard. He says, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this. He's the one that made all this. He's the one that owns all this. Satan's not even renting it. Galatians 5, 17 through 25, we may do that. For the word says in 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and they're contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. You do not do the things that you wish. We've always seen that statement as a negative one. What if the wish was put in your heart by Jesus? Even warfare keeps us from obtaining the wish. Anyway. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, Arguments, contentions, are you being contentious with anybody in the family? Well, they're wrong and I'm right. Well, both of you are wrong and he's right. Right? We we'll have to get our head together and head around this thing now. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalry. Whew, man. My only conclusion reading that is if you're running with that bunch, you're in trouble anyway. Have you heard that list? I came out of that. Thank you, Jesus. About 90% doesn't apply, but anyway. And so it says, so be sanctified by God's word that has an effect upon us it is through the word that God cleanses us and makes us holy Ephesians 5 26 to make her holy cleansing by the washing with water through the word of God John 17 verse 17 sanctify them by the truth and your word well tell you what my conclusion is this. Most of the spiritual warfare that I experience, I experience because I opened my mouth and I let the enemy know what I was thinking. If I'd kept my mouth shut, he would have never known what I was thinking, nor would I have ever been tempted to go that way. However, Fred, not having learned yet how to put a clamp on it, lets the enemy in on a lot of things that I'm thinking 
and suddenly it manifests or that thing that thought comes into my mind and I'm blown away I don't know where in the world they got that then the Holy Spirit comes along and says if you'll quit speaking it they'll quit doing it because they don't know nothing until you tell them yet the Holy Spirit knows all things he knows the mind of Christ Were you here the other night when I almost had to undress to get rid of it? Sweet Jesus. That's why he got in the boat and pushed a little far out and he spoke back towards the people because he didn't get all entangled. If I'd gotten into the boat, see, I would have gotten entangled and tripped and fallen on the fishing net that was in the boat. Guys, when we have an understanding by the power of the Holy Spirit on how much our Lord loves us, how much he wants us to have the very best, how he will empower you to do that, it says that we're being sanctified for a purpose. For a purpose. We're not being sanctified to go to heaven. We're being sanctified for a purpose that he has for us. What is that purpose I have no idea I know that one purpose for me is that I like to share the word I like to go on a uh, another mission trip there are several purposes that the Lord's laid out for me some of them I've accomplished and some of them I haven't because I'm not letting him finish the sanctification that it is required to move on with him you realize Sanctification draws you closer. Spiritual warfare draws you further away. Let's just keep it simple. The Lord loves you. The Lord appreciates you. The Lord has a purpose. And if you'll surrender to the Holy Spirit, okay, I'll say that. It's time that we let him decide what to get rid of. Fred will go to God with a page of stuff. Glory to God. I'm willing to give this up, Lord. And you know what? He's not impressed because I chose these things. You know what the problem is with me choosing it? Oh, I inherited that from back in the garden when I obtained the ability to know or to proclaim what's good and what's evil. draw closer to him and let him sanctify you and what that means is some of the things that you don't want to let go of you're going to let go of or saying or doing or eating or drinking or gosh whatever the trip wire might be well let's stand up so I can pray so that we can go eat I hope that this blesses you. I hope it gives you a little different perspective. There were times in my life that I could swear that the enemy was whipping up on me when all it was was my flesh resisting the Holy Spirit while he was trying to sanctify me to move on. So let's not do that. Father, I thank you that these precious folks have come to hear what the Lord had laid on my heart. I ask you, Lord, that uh, you would cause it to change their mind in areas that you've been trying to work with them on and sanctify them and continue that because you have a purpose for every one of us. Bless the folks, Lord, that have made the food for tonight. We thank you for their dedication and their persistence. Lord, I thank you for my church. for the band, for all the teams, for the administration. Thank you that you brought me here. 
almost withered away in all those other churches. I thank you that you brought me here where there was some fire. I call down the fire of the Holy Spirit upon myself and the congregation tonight to spark a desire to remember what it was like for our first love. Bless the food and those that are going to serve it. In Jesus' name, amen.